What is the Kalman filter? Well, it's the optimal linear filter for discrete time systems. So let's look at this set of equations here for a linear discrete time system. We have the state vector x, and uh, I'll give an example in a minute, but this is a vector here which represents the state of the system. And this equation tells us how that state goes from time k to time k plus 1. It's a linear set of equations, so the state gets multiplied by a matrix, the update matrix. Then there's also disruption that happens, so there's noise that gets added to that. And the noise here we're going to be assuming is Gaussian, but we could be more general. That's multiplied by a matrix, so this is a vector, Gaussian vector, plus we're allowing for some deterministic inputs uh, to this uh, system. Uh, and, and that gets multiplied by a matrix. Again, this is a vector. So this is what we call our state space equation. And then we're going to be observing that state through this equation here. So we don't actually get to know what that state is. And that's what the Kalman filter is going to be doing. It is going to be using these measurements to get estimates of the state. Uh, so here's how you observe it, you have the state multiplied by, again it's linear, multiplied by a matrix plus some Gaussian noise of the observation, which is in this case we're going to look at the case where it's independent of the noise that affected the system. So let's look at an example. When would this, when would this uh, be a practical system to, to consider? Well actually it's very, very many cases, but let's look at one here. So let's think about a situation where we might have a ship in a harbour and we're trying to track the location of that ship as it moves in the harbour. So we have east direction and north direction and we have an initial location for the ship and then we have some estimates of where that ship has moved. So the ship will have moved and we are then going to be observing it not directly but through this equation and then we're going to see what we're going to ask ourselves questions like if it has moved from here to here where is it going to move next? So can we predict using the Kalman filter, can we predict where it's going to go next? And can we get a good estimate for where it is next after we make our next measurement or our next observation? In this example here, perhaps the, the input, the direct input would be the uh, controls that the captain of the ship has applied to the ship. These are deterministic that the captain's putting to maneuver the ship. The W might be the waves and the wind, which is disrupting the movement of the ship. Uh, the x is the um, is a vector, a two by one vector, which is the amount of east and north uh, in a vector. That would be the state of the ship. And then the observations might be, for example, a scaled version of the location. Like, for example, we might be looking uh, at the ship. Let's say, for example, uh, very simply, a simple example is we might be looking at the ship from above, from a helicopter, and the helicopter is looking through a a, a a lens and that lens is scaling the location. So we're getting a scaled version of the location, the X and Y location, the, the east and north location. Uh, plus there's some noise because the person who's looking through that lens uh, is making some errors as they're estimating where that location is. So that might be an intuitive example that matches these equations here. So let's come back and think about this uh, in a minute. Let's write down some of those strict uh, um, assumptions we're making. Uh, we're, the initial state of x uh, is, is unknown, but has a mean of x tilde naught and a covariance of a matrix P naught. We're just going to be assuming that in this system. Uh, as I said, uh, w and v are zero mean Gaussian, and this equation here shows their uh, the relationship between them. So the expected value of this vector times itself uh, um, transposed uh, shows us that there's zeros on the off diagonal. That's the one case we're going to consider here, although there are more general versions. So this tells us here that we're considering the case where there's no correlation between the noise in the state and the noise in the observations. Uh, and this delta here tells us that these have the autocorrelation only when k equals l. So they are also independent in time. So the, the w's and the v's are independent from one time to the next. Now, here is our estimate. This is what the Kalman filter is going to be calculating for us. So we're going to use a hat over the x to represent an estimate of x. 
And what this notation means is that an estimate of x at time k given all of the observations up to k minus 1. So that's what this notation means. And that is defined as being the expected value of xk, the state vector, the expected value of that, given, and we're going to use a capital Z here, is the collection of all the measurements up until time, in this case, k minus 1. So that's what the capital Z means. So this is a conditional probability where we are saying, what is our expected value of x in this example down here? What's our expected location given all the observations we've made up to time k minus 1? That's this equation here. Uh, if we have x subscript k vertical line k, that means the expected value of x given all of the measurements, including the measurement at time k. So that's the notation. And here we have a matrix, which is defined, you can see here as a matrix, which is the, because um, this is a vector, this is a row, because there's a transpose. And so this is the correlation uh, matrix, uh, covariance matrix for the estimate. So it's the expected value of the error. This is the true location or the true state minus the estimated state. Uh, and so this is a matrix which we're going to need in our filter as well. So there's lots of equations and lots of notation. I'm going to show you the equations now for the Kalman filter. And again, there's lots of equations here, but let's walk ourselves through them slowly so we really understand them. So here is an update for our state estimate. So this, let's look at this one first. What's happening in this equation? I might just cover up the others so we're not distracted and let's look focus on this one here. So this is saying that we are going to be First of all, calculating what is the estimate of x at time k given the measurements up to k minus 1. That's what we defined over here. And the Kalman filter says that we can work that out from the previous estimate at time k minus 1 given all the measurements up to time k minus 1. So if we've got that value, then we can take that value, which is the estimate at time k minus 1, which was based on all of the measurements up to time k minus 1, so everything we knew up to that previous time. If we take that estimate, multiply by f, and we can see the matching that's going on here between the actual state and our estimate. So our estimate is following the same form as our actual state. So we're taking our estimate, we're updating our estimate by multiplying by f, which is getting to looking at the next time, uh, plus the deterministic input, which we know about, so we can take our previous estimate at time k minus 1 with all the measurements up to take time k minus 1, and we can work out this value over here that we defined. So how do, should we think about this equation? Well, this equation is an update equation because we're going from k minus 1 to k. This is the update equation that we would make to our state estimate if we didn't actually have any new measurements. Okay, so we've only got measurements up to k minus 1 but we'd like to predict where our new state is. And so this is the equation that enables us to do that. Predicting into the future without having taken a measurement yet. So then we can think to ourselves, okay, how do we update that once we do take a measurement at time k? And that's what the next equation in the Kalman set of equations is. So here we have now the estimate at time k given that we've taken a measurement at time k. And not surprisingly, that equals the predicted state that we just worked out before we'd taken the measurement at time k. So this was the best we could do at predicting what's happening at time k without having actually yet taken that measurement at time k. That's this value here. And then we're going to modify that. In this case, in the Kalman filter case, it's an addition of a term which depends on the measurement at time k. Okay, so, and this term depends on how much error there is between what we measure at time k and what we would have predicted to have measured. So here, if we, if we again, if we take our prediction without having yet taken the measurement, if we take that and put it into this equation here, we are going to, where we multiply by h prime k, we are going to get what we think we should be measuring, okay? And that's what this is here. You can see it exactly. It's x at time k given k minus 1. That's what we just calculated. The best prediction we could have at time k 
before we actually take a measurement at time k. Multiply it by h prime k, that will give us where we are expecting our measurement to be. Now our measurement is never exactly there because x hat is never exactly the state and also there's noise in the measurement. So there's an error term here. And that error term gets multiplied by what we call a Kalman gain. Okay, so here's the two steps for updating our state space estimate. And they're iterative because as each time k goes on, you can put this one now into this with a different, with the time offsets there goes into there. You update the next one at the next time, put this value into here and here, you get the next one and you keep iterating these. So this is the Kalman filter giving you either one step ahead prediction or an estimate after you've made the measurement at time k. So now the only thing we don't know is this Kalman gain here. So how do we calculate the Kalman gain? And so these are the other equations in the set of equations. So here's the Kalman gain. It uses capital K because of Kalman's name. It's a bit confusing because there's a little k for the time, but uh, just to know that why we use the capital K there. Uh, so we've got a capital K here at time k equals this covariance matrix over here uh, times h, and you can see all of the expressions here, including this uh, matrix here, which is the noise correlation matrix uh, from the measurements. Okay, so let's now look at this. How do we calculate uh, this, this terms here? Well, we need to know this covariance matrix defined over here. How do we calculate this? Well, there's two equations for calculating this. And again, they are iterative equations uh, where you first of all update uh, to the next time what you are one step ahead without having taken a measurement. And then you put that into here where you can then update to find this matrix after you have taken a measurement. And again, you iterate these two uh, equations exactly as we iterated the state space estimation equations. Okay, so let's finish by coming back to this example of the ship in the harbour, just to really try to see a practical example of these two equations here. So for example, this, uh, as we said, the ship has traveled around here. So you might have the estimate here uh, uh, at time one after measuring the, the measurement at time one. This might be the estimate at time two after measuring uh, the Z at time two, uh, this at three uh, and so on. And this one here at four, let's say. Okay, so what are these two equations? Let's really see this one. So this equation here would take, uh, we're, we're now trying to find out about time five. Okay, so we want to know time five given the measurements up to time four. So this is what we knew about at time four. This is this one here. So x of four, four, and we're trying to find x hat of five, four. Okay, so we find uh, we can use this equation here to get a value uh, which is a linear uh, operation on this exact value here uh, times this matrix F. And let's say, for example, it put us here. Okay, so this might be x hat of five given four. This is where it, uh, this equation here tells us we think it's gone from here before we've taken the measurement at time five. And then we need this equation here to take that value, because this will be five, four, that value here, to take that value and correct it after we've taken the measurement at time five. So this would be Z five that we'd be taking here. So again, this is an error term here. So let's say, for example, we took an example where, where H equals one. Let's just say this is the identity matrix just to make our life simple. And let's say that this value over here, let's say that that value there is ZK. Okay, so let's say this is ZK here, ZK. Okay, so this might be Z5. Okay, so let's say you've measured Z5. And this equation here predicted, before you got a chance to measure that, it predicted that the state space would be over here, but now you've measured Z5 over here. So let's look at this term here. This term is Z5 minus this predicted value here. And I said we're going to just for simplicity consider H to be identity. So that's this value here. So this in the side, the square brackets here is the vector ZK minus uh, the, this vector here. So that is actually this vector here, okay? So inside the square brackets is that vector there. And then you're gonna multiply that vector by an amount given by the Kalman gain and 
add it to this, this location here. So to get the overall update, you are moving along here according to this equation. You're moving along here by this amount. That's this value here. And then you are going to move along this direction according to what's in the square brackets by an amount given by the Kalman gain. And that is going to give you, let's say, for example, uh, that value took you to this point here. So you've moved that far along uh, the vector and that value there would be x hat of 5 given 5. Okay, so I just wanted to give this practical example and so you can sort of graphically see, visualize what, the, what these equations are doing to an estimate of a state space in a, in a two-dimensional example of tracking a ship in a harbour. So hopefully this has given more insight into these equations. If you found the video helpful, uh, give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Check out the description below for more videos. And if there's a web page there where you'll find a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos.